We are online. Dobry den. Hello. Three months today, 21st of May. It all started 90 days ago. Today, we have a special guest from Kiev, Taya Druzhenko, who has joined us and who will, uh, well, she's chosen the song on which we will dance today. So, Taya, hi. Can you uh, tell us why or what you chose, why you chose it? Yeah, of course. Um, I have chosen this song uh, because usually we listen to some modern Ukrainian music because it's more popular, but we had really great masterpieces back then in the Soviet time. Uh, there were really good um, bands and songs. So I want to pay a little bit attention to that time. And uh, this song was written in uh, 1975. Uh, and it's called, uh, the song will be between us. Um, and if you will be interested in this kind of music, there are lots of things to hear online, yeah, and to, yeah, to admire the sounds of that uh, that part of uh, the history, yeah. So the name of the band is? Uh, it's called the Smerichka, which is um, one kind of a tree, uh, but it's like a pine tree, but one of the kinds of the pine tree. <laughs> okay, and the, the title you said is This Song is Among Us, right? Oui, uh, yes, yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> ben on va danser sur cette chanson. <laughs> Thank you, let's dance and after the dance we will have a, a little talk with you. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy the dance in front of the screen and behind the screen.
thank you for this discovery. So the band's name you said is Smerichka. Smerichka. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. That was cool. Thank you. So a song from 1975 that is classified as funk, Ukrainian funk genre, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it, uh, the time back then, in 70s, it was, it was like a um, time in Ukraine when um, um, the bands appeared and they were costumed in traditional Ukrainian uh, costumes, like so, some some house customized to, to to do the concerts. They were brighter, like and everything. Yeah, but um, it was very popular to sing in Ukrainian. Uh, it was really popular popular to sing uh, on the Ukrainian lyrics by famous um, authors. Um, and usually we we think of 70s and the, of Soviet Union like uh, the period when was only like Russian culture everywhere. But we, uh, as we see, wow. it was a really great time for those uh, bands to 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 brighten. Yeah, and there were like dozens of them. Uh, some of them were really popular, some not, but. Uh, but uh, yeah, but they were truly, truly Ukrainian. Um, yeah, and I really do love them. And I opened it myself because it is not really popular to <laughs> listen to the seventies uh, right now. But uh, we we have we have YouTube, <laughs> um, a great <laughs> possibility to find everything. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really happy that you had the possibility to listen to this. Thank music. you for this discovery, yeah. Super, so Taya for everyone, Taya is in Kyiv. Um, of course, I have loads of questions for you, but does anyone from you guys who are connected here have a question to her? Kezad, maybe? Yeah, how are you? How, how are you? How are you? <laughs> uh, now I'm really good after this dance. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but last days uh, were like a little bit um, um, sad. I don't know why. Mm, yeah, <laughs> we have some, <laughs> some, uh, some, some things to be said of. Um, yeah, but I find lots of uh, good moments of um, uh, of this time because summer is near. Everything is like blooming, flowers, trees. Yeah, um, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, situation is in Ukraine is not getting better for 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 this moment as we see yeah and all my uh, family is on the battlefield as medics so i'm a little bit more involved than maybe some other people uh, but we're trying to keep uh, strong yeah um yeah. so your family is uh at the front line right yeah um one minute, I will close the window. <laughs> Someone wants to mow the lawn <laughs> right now. Um, when the war started in 2014, when Russia invaded Ukraine uh, and annexed Crimea, um, my dad decided to create a volunteer hospital. Uh, so it was working there on the east for for eight years, for seven and a half years, and it saved fifty-six thousand people. Um, so it's quite a lot, a big amount of people. Uh, and right now, it 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 is very very um, important to work uh, there. 
and um, they're working as medics uh, near the battlefield. They um, stabilize people who are uh, injured, uh, soldiers or civilians, um, and uh, then they uh, operate, uh, make operations in the hospital, in the nearest hospital um, to the, yeah, to the battlefields. Um, yeah, and right now there is my mom, she's a medic, my dad is a manager, like of this all <laughs> a thing, because there are lots of things to do uh, beside operations like journalists, fundings, uh, you know, like lots of bureaucratical things with uh, government. Um, my boyfriend is there as paramedic. Um, and uh, yeah, this, my, all my, <laughs> my loved people are, are there. Mm, um, yeah, this is the story, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Well, well, well done for your, I don't know, just being, yeah, uh, happy and motivated. I mean, motivated, no, uh, just, yeah, for all you're doing and that your family is doing as well. Uh, I don't think we can realize what's happening because we're uh, not there. But uh, yeah, um, well, well done and congratulations for all you're doing and good luck and courage to you and your family and your friends. Yeah, thank you. We're trying to keep strong because there are lots of prob uh, problems right now as a humanitarian catastrophe in the, some parts of the Ukraine because there are some parts where is no like food or some medicines are given to locals uh, because of the occupation, for example, or like, uh, um, I don't know, or maybe um, shellings, like no possibilities to enter villages or small towns. Um, we're trying to, to, to make something. I'm working with humanitarian aid right now um and we're helping people from from towns and cities and villages uh, where it is uh, needed uh usually it is uh, uh, the regions which is boarding with russia uh but but unfortunately i cannot say that um that only um eastern parts of ukraine are in danger Every day we have uh, we have uh, a rocket alarm, um, and rockets are sent to some to to all of regions of Ukraine, like to the western, to east, north, to Kiev, like every everywhere. So it is. I cannot say that I'm safe here, because they usually they destroy. Uh, museums with shellings, hospitals, um, I don't know, civil buildings. It's not like a military ones. Um, yeah, and you know, I'm hearing uh, some stories that my mom is telling me. Um, children, yeah, uh, like pregnant women, um, small girls are raped. Yeah, you know, this is like crazy, crazy, crazy situation. Small boys are raped, yeah, you know. Um, um, and I couldn't imagine that <laughs> this is like for real, that there are people living in this world that could do uh, those um, awful I things. A, I have a question to you because um, as you say, you cannot imagine that there can be people on earth doing that and you are in that country in one of these countries of the world in which it is happening right now and we are not and uh, as you were saying Kezad it's difficult to imagine it's difficult to feel it we can intellectualize it we can understand it with words but maybe from the inside can you give us 
a, a tip <laughs> and a piece of advice on how can we connect to your reality? Is there something that can make it more efficient? Um, you know, I was thinking about that uh, lots of people in Ukraine got used to the war. It's crazy to hear about it, but like it started to be our normal life. Um, and all the other world got used to the war, to like news about Ukraine. And it's not really interesting because 90 days of the war, uh, it's no how the media works. Uh, media wants to have another uh another news about other some like big big uh, problems or maybe i don't know med gala <laughs> oscar other things yeah um maybe maybe some how to feel uh, feel uh our people I don't really know. Maybe it's like a possibility to hear real stories from real people in your towns, your countries, maybe to find some refugees uh, centers because it's uh, it's really hard to to feel that from the screen, from the news, from the messages. Um, maybe just like possibility to talk with real people to hear real stories um, because uh, news are are giving you uh, like um, some brightest like brightest uh, things of the war but usually you don't hear about uh, destroyed like cultural monuments i'm i'm working in a cultural field so it's like <laughs> For me, it's important, or maybe um, about how um, how wheat of uh, like tons of uh, wheat, wheat, yeah, um, are being stolen uh, from Ukraine by Russian. So maybe we will hear that uh, the world maybe will have a hunger situation this year. Um, yeah. I really don't know how to feel the war not living <laughs> in, 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 in this country because even I'm not really um, close to the battlefield. But I, every day I hear, um, how to say that? I will uh, translate. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, demining. I, I, demining in Kiev. Yeah, like... Uh, explosion the sounds of explosion and i got used to it because it's like every day and they left lots of mines in the uh, kiev region yeah mm. you mean that the demining has started now yeah it started from the first day when russia russian soldiers went to other parts of ukraine so uh every city and town it's not like fully demined, but it's uh, it is uh, safe to be um, in inside of the town. It's not allowed to visit forests, for example, or meadows. Uh, yeah, but uh, cities are safe. I hope. Yeah. Um, so you mean that you are, for example, in Kiev, and if you want to go out to have a walk in the forest, you cannot go because there is a huge danger Danger to, that yeah. it is behind. Yeah, yeah. So your, your reality is you cannot go for a walk outside of the city anymore. No, it's, uh, there are lots of stories when people got injured and like dead uh, after going to the forest uh, or to other, other places of nature. Uh, because there are not only mines like of Russians, which are the uh, majority, but there are some mines of our uh, our mines because um, it is uh, it is important to make some places dangerous. Yeah, um, this is how some military things work. Um, yeah, so it you are forbidden to visit forests 
because it's really dangerous for your life. And I have forest um, like 200 meters from my house and uh, I cannot visit it because I do not know where, where is danger. There are no, uh, no stickers <laughs> or <laughs> some um, other, um, I don't know, attention, um, attention um, marks. marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm a nature lover. I, I really love to, to walk uh, in forests and meadows and visit the river and lakes and uh, with my dog especially. Um, but <laughs> I will prefer not to uh, right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and I truly, truly love our South is incredibly beautiful and special and I don't think that I will visit it in uh, maybe near five years or ten years after the occupation because um, yeah because there is so much mines and other armored stuff uh, that yeah you know you you hear uh, you hear about uh, about the um, mines of the Second World War now, sometimes, yeah. But <laughs> how many years it should go after this war uh, that this will be uh, safe to visit all all Ukraine? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I hope that my children <laughs> maybe will uh, will will have this possibility, yeah. Does any one of you, Carol, does that have a question? No, I see, yeah. I, I just wanna say thanks for sharing. Thanks for dancing with us. And uh, thank you, Madeleine, for all you're doing. And, um, I sadly have to leave. I have to go, but all the best and stay strong, stay safe. And uh, yeah, keep the smile. It's a beautiful smile. Thank you. That's nice what you say. Yeah. Um, bye. Bye, Kevin. Bye. I was wondering, um, what can we do? What do you need? Um, I think that it's really important to not forget, like to make it like a second, third plan uh, of, of the reality. Um, uh, this is first of all. And the second uh, thing that I want to say that usually lots of people do not understand is uh, to not support Russian culture right now because I think that Ukrainian culture should be heard. Like uh, I heard that um, some charity uh, events which are made to support Ukraine, like they play Tchaikovsky <laughs> or Rachmaninov, which is which is I don't really understand because they like Russian composers and we do have. We really, truly do have our masterpieces of Ukrainian uh, music and Ukrainian composers, which are not really world famous because we Ukraine didn't have so much money to provide um, Ukrainian culture to the world. As we we know that <laughs> Russia gave lots of money to to spread their culture, spread their on the one side, on the other side, spread their uh, propaganda. Um, and I really want to, uh, you to do is to, to maybe get interested in something Ukrainian. Yeah, we, we, we truly do have our artists, our theater players, our, our books, our music, our, I don't know, our fashion designers we and they're famous but like not as famous as the world famous ones and 
it's really important to remember that this culture was banned by Russian, by Russia through all the history, through the Soviet times, through the Russian empire. Uh, Ukrainian uh, language was banned uh, for all those time. So um, I really want you to remember that we do have our truly uh, great and uh, really deep and interesting culture. And it's really important uh, to find out something interesting for you. And if you're interested, I may help you because I'm, uh, I, uh, I have graduated from uh, cultural studies. So I will be really happy to help you to find something that suits you. Um, and this will be a great pleasure um, because it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big treasure. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I, can, uh, I can tell that, that Ukrainian culture, modern and the past one is a great treasure. Yeah, and yeah. Through, through the culture, you will feel all the other parts. It is true that you already helped several times to find the music of our dancing library. Um, and it is also one of the reasons why we do that. That's true. And it is true that there is a whole other way of perceiving this topic here in some countries of Europe. Um, I was mentioning it yesterday with Anastasia Peretz, um, this question of nationalism and national culture in Ukraine is to be considered, I, I think, very differently than the perception we might have here in France, Switzerland, Germany about nationalism, because we see that as something extremist and um, closing the borders to other foreign countries and people. But with Ukraine, the topic of nationalism is different. It's having the right to exist and it's fully on another scale. So spreading Ukrainian culture is just um, um, supporting the right to exist. Do I get that right? Yeah, it's right. But you know, uh, when you are in Bavaria and they you, uh, wear this tr truly very beautiful like uh, dresses and some pants, uh, traditional ones. They wear this in uh, everyday life. I've seen lots of people and you don't call this a nationalism. It's, it's like a traditions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and um, in Europe, most European countries have uh, more nationalist uh, political um, parties. Then in Ukraine, we we had only 2%, 2% in our government. So it's nothing. And usually nationalism is just overrated by medias. It's, <laughs> it's not an extremist uh, thing. We didn't like, we didn't even have they them presented in the, in the parliament. How, how could we talk about the Ukrainian nationalism? Yeah, so I think this is really overrated. Uh, topic because uh, when because <laughs> it's just culture of another independent country we have our own language which is not new it is a part of Slavic languages uh, it is truly similar to Belarusian and then Polish and then Czech and after all those Slavic languages to Russian Russians usually do not understand Ukrainian, but somehow people call that Russian and Ukrainian languages are similar. We do understand Russians because we are bilingual, as we had a history of Soviet Union, of Russian Empire, and it was the main language to be, to be a part of the society. But right now, we, we, we have a possibility to Mm, to talk um, by our language. We have a possibility to wear our clothes. We have a possibility to 
to have our own flag, constitution, uh, I don't know, government, our borders, and what <laughs> it couldn't be called as a nationalist. Uh, yeah, it's just the normal things that normal country have. Um, but somehow Russia do not understand that. It think, uh, Russia thinks that it was a part of a great empire and it still is, but <laughs> it doesn't, yeah. And we really, we truly, really want to live our own independent life. We never wanted other parts of the world, yeah. We're not that country that conquer anyone. Like we have uh, so many, uh, so many people of different nationalities in Ukraine. There are Crimean Tatars that being banned in uh, Crimea that are the native, um, the natives of that island and of that uh, part of Ukraine. They were living like long before the Russians came uh, uh, by the Catherine the Third. Um, we have some uh, Greek people, uh, which is like for a long time, like uh, like uh, centuries. We have Polish, Germans. We have uh, some uh -huh. special natives, which has live only in Ukraine. So. We're free <clears throat> for all people. I didn't even hear about racism, like a big problems of racism. Yes, so it is really free country for everyone to live. Um, yeah, and <laughs> I don't know why someone doesn't want us to exist. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs> of course, yeah. And also when we spoke a few weeks ago, I was very surprised to discover that you speak French. <laughs> yeah. Oui. Tu parles français. Oui, je parle français. Uh, mais... C'est merveilleux. <laughs> C'est difficile d'apprendre le français. Oui, un peu. Euh, je n'aime, euh, je n'aime pas le grammaire <rire> parce qu'il y a beaucoup, euh, beaucoup de, euh, je ne sais pas, euh, beaucoup de des règles. Lettres, oui, beaucoup de lettres <rire> euh, euh, qui que je ne, je ne dois pas, euh, comment te dire. Euh, um, 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 prononcer, oui, <rire> oui, euh, c'est un peu difficile. Mais, euh, mais euh, quand je parle, <rire> c'est une autre situation. <rire> oui, euh, oui, j'aime, euh, j'aime cette langue. C'est une, c'est une très, très belle langue et je Je veux, je veux, euh, je veux voyager des, des, euh, des nord du d'Afrique comme, euh, comme, euh, oh mon Dieu, euh, <rire> euh, tu cherches le nom d'un pays? Euh, oui, oui, j'ai oublié, euh, je ne sais pas pourquoi. Amérique, Maroc, Tunisie. Uh, uh, Maroc, oui, oui, Maroc. Uh, uh, j'espère, uh, j'espère de visiter ce pays. Uh, et j'espère de, de visiter uh, l'autre pays, mais j'ai visité Suisse et France. Et, uh, oui, et uh, je n'ai pas visité uh, Belgique. Mais à B, oui, à Belgique à, et Luxembourg. <rire> à, mais c'est pour, pour la future, <rire> peut-être. Ah, oui. À, tu, as, tu as appris le français à l'école 
Ah non, euh, j'ai appris le français avec une, une professeure, une professrice, oui, et euh, elle m'a, euh, elle m'a étudié, non et Elle m'a euh, enseigné Enseigné, oui, euh, français. Et pour euh, deux ans, euh, j'ai euh, j'ai commencé à, à parler français. <rire> oui. Bravo. Euh, <rire> oui. Euh, mais 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 je euh, je ne parle pas français très très vite comme anglais <rire> parce que j'ai parlé anglais pour euh, tout, toute ma vie. <rire> oui. Euh, de quatre ans euh, peut-être. <rire> euh, oui. Euh, euh, mais euh, j'espère que je serai mieux <rire> euh, en France. En, oui, euh, je, je parlerai euh, mieux, oui. <rire> Euh... Pour, pour ça, il faut te donner des occasions de pouvoir parler français. Donc, oui, si, vous oui. écoutez, si vous nous écoutez et que vous voulez échanger avec Taya en français, eh bien, euh, comme elle le proposait, elle a plein de, de pistes à nous offrir sur la culture ukrainienne et elle peut le faire en français. Voilà. Oui, oui. Euh, <rire> pas de problème. <rire> je, peux, je peux vous aider. De, euh, à, de chercher euh, la, la culture ukrainienne et, et comprendre euh, comprenez, euh, mon culture parce que c'est très bon et c'est très différent euh, dans les euh, euh, c'est très euh, c'est très différent de de région de de l'année oui euh, mais, mais c'est très, très bon, oui. <rire> oui. Je dois vous laisser. Oui. Merci beaucoup, Taya. Merci. <rire> Bye. Bye. Est -ce que... Salut, Carole. Est-ce que tu, tu veux encore rajouter quelque chose Sinon, on va aussi se, se dire au revoir. Je, je pense que c'est tout. <rire> Oui. Ouais. Est-ce qu'il y a quelque chose, un message que tu veux encore euh, partager euh, Je pense que j'ai dit tout. <rire> oui. Euh, oui. Eh ben, merci beaucoup d'avoir pris ce temps avec nous. Thank you very much. Ah, et Elsa qui était avec thank nous. You. <rire> I just wanted to say thank you. Oui, merci beaucoup et puis très bonne journée et merci. beaucoup de bonnes idées, de courage. Hein. Merci, merci. Euh, bonne journée, vous. Merci. <rire> merci. Plein de, plein de belles choses et à bientôt dans la danse. À bientôt. Bye bye. <rire> Au revoir. Au revoir, Taïa. Au revoir.